Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quartic equation, a very special one. So I'm going to be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first method. Now, when you look at an equation like this, and you're trying to find the solutions, obviously you don't want to use the quartic formula, which is pretty complicated. You can look for rational solutions. If we check the divisors of two or factors of two, we can end up finding, first of all, notice that there are no positive solutions because all the coefficients are positive. So you're only going to be looking at negative one and negative two. And unfortunately, those values do not satisfy the equation. Therefore, we don't really have any rational solutions. So we're going to look uh, in a different way and try to factor this. So to be able to factor it, I'm going to present two methods, like I said earlier. The first method basically involves some identities that I need to tell you about. So before we start factoring this, I'm going to have you look at the following. And I think we've done this before in another video. So we're going to factor this expression first, x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. Obviously, this equation can be factored by using difference of two squares, add x squared and subtract it. And then here you get x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one, which is a perfect square. And x squared is of course a perfect square. Now, how do you write the first expression? That is x squared plus one quantity squared. And this is of course x squared. Now, since this expression can be written as a difference of two squares, it is factorable. Let's go ahead and write it in the factored form. Using difference of two squares, I can safely say that this is going to be x squared plus one plus x, but I'd like to write it as x squared plus x plus one. And the other factor is going to be x squared minus x plus one. And you can always check that by using the distributive property. But this is a well-known identity. This expression comes up a lot. So why did I attempt to factor this? Because our expression can be broken down in a special way. That's why I called it a special quartic equation. And let's see why it's special. So let's go back to the original x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus x plus 2. My goal is to solve this equation, but if I can factor it, then solving it would be a piece of cake. Now, notice that this expression can be written as x to the fourth power plus x squared plus 1 plus x squared plus x squared plus x plus 1. Notice that we you broke down the x squared and we broke down the 2 and we got two pieces. And notice that this piece is actually factorable. We just did that. And one of the factors of the first piece is actually the second piece. So this is going to be factorable by grouping. So let's go ahead and write the factors of this one first. That's going to be x squared plus x plus 1 multiplied by x squared minus x plus 1. Plus, since the second one doesn't really have anything to multiply by, I can use a 1 x squared times x times 1. Now, we have a common factor. Let's go ahead and use that. x squared plus x plus 1 is a common factor. So the whole idea is break it down in a factorable way. And now we have x squared plus x plus 1 multiplied by x squared minus x plus 1 plus 1. That is going to give us a plus 2 here. Therefore, we were able to factor this quartic equation into two quadratics. And since our equation is equal to zero, let's go ahead and set this equal to zero and look for solutions. Finding the solutions at that point will be fairly easy. If you use the quadratic formula, I'm just going to give it to you. One of the solutions, or I should say rather a set of solutions would be negative one plus minus the square root of three i over two. By the way, this is also a very common expression that comes up in um, with complex numbers, you know, the complex cube roots of one, so on and so forth. I think we recently did a video on that one too. Anyways, the other set of solutions is going to be 1 plus minus the square root of 7i divided by 2. So what do you notice? All the solutions are non-real complex. Great. So this is the first method. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Obviously, the second method is different. And it involves, of course, the same idea here. We want to factor this. But 
how can I factor it without manipulating like that in the first method, right? Well, here's what I can do. I can assume that there's going to be two quadratic factors. Well, why, why can I assume that? Can't there be a linear and a cubic factor? Uh, that's not possible because we noticed that there are no rational solutions, right? So we can't really have a linear uh, factor, at least with integer coefficients, right? Okay. So, for example, x plus 1, x minus 1, something like that can never be a factor. So, we're going to factor it in such a way that, now, one thing I want you to notice, that we don't have x cubed. So, this is a reduced quartic, which is nice. So, when I factor it, I'm going to assume the following form. This can be written as x squared plus ax plus 1 times x squared minus ax plus 2. Now, the reason why I use a plus ax and minus ax is because when I distribute here and here, I'm going to get the x cubed term cancel out. That's why I'm able to uh, pick my uh, factors that way. Either this method is going to work or, of course, I can at the same time have a negative 1 and negative 2 instead of the positive 1 and positive 2. Because all I need is actually two integers whose product is 2 and it can be done in two ways. Now, which of these is going to work? So here's what you're going to notice. If you start, uh, well, let's try the negative one. So, what am I going to do here? Uh, well, we're going to set, uh, we're going to go ahead and distribute this. Let's go ahead and distribute here. We're going to get x to the fourth power. And then, since the x cube is going to cancel out, I don't really have to worry about it. So, I can just go ahead. I mean, if you want, you can just distribute it and see that it cancels out like this. And then, ax cubed minus a squared x squared minus 2ax. And then, minus x squared plus ax. So you have to get nine terms, so distribute everything over everything. And the x cubed cancels out. And if you kind of put it together, um, like combining like terms, you're going to get the x to the fourth minus. Notice that the coefficient of x squared is negative a squared. And then I get negative, x, negative 2x squared minus 1x squared. That's a negative 3x squared. So I can kind of write this as a squared plus 3 in parentheses with a negative sign in the front. And then this takes care of pretty much all the x squared terms. And these two are going to give me negative ax. And that's just going to end up with a positive 2. And I have to set this, uh, obviously, equal to my original expression. And from here, to keep a long story short, you want this to be negative 2, which implies that a squared equals negative 5. Obviously, that's not going to work because we're looking for a real number. I mean, integer, even like a more specific case. So this option is not going to work. Therefore, uh, we have to go with the other one. Now, the million dollar question is, is there a way to find that without trying both? Something to think about. And when you set this equal to, you know, this expression, you're going to get the following. Let me give it to you to save some time here. You can go ahead and distribute and, you know, arrange it. You're going to get that this equals my original expression, which is x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus x plus 2. And from here, you get that this is equal to 2, meaning a squared equals 1. From here, you get a equals 1, and that is already satisfied here. Therefore, a equals 1, and we get x squared plus x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 2 equals 0. And from here, we get the exact same solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.